Welcome back to the AM Weekend Show. My name is Divine Onoha. Now, yesterday was the International Women's Day themed inspiring inclusion. I've just been joined by some very amazing guests, some very beautiful. In fact, it's like a women's meeting right here on the AM Weekend Show set. I have Miss Ede Rachel Obiagiri, founder of the Godsey Woman. And Ogochuku Merem, Ogochuku Merem Madre, the creative director of Testimony Service. You're welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Divine. I just rather call you Godsey Woman. <laughs> That's and fine. What would I call you now? What, would I call you? <laughs> what, what, what should we call you? Okay, call me Ogochuku Merem Madreke. Ogochuku Merem Madreke is Madreke. Madreke. It's kind of long. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. You guys look Thank beautiful. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so we're going to start off with the theme. The theme for this year's International Women's Day, Inspiring Inclusion. Now, I'd like to ask you, what does Inspiring Inclusion mean? mean? What, does it, what does inclusion, first of all, mean? And then what does Inspiring Inclusion mean to the female folks and to everybody in general? Okay. Um, uh, oh, this year's... Uh, Theme like this says inspiring, inspiring inclusion. Um, over the years we've talked about uh, gender equality, gender parity. But yes, women we've come up, but um, we have this challenge, and that is uh, us being heard, our voice being heard, us being given the opportunity. So we have diversity of uh, opinions, ideas, but. Um, uh, we need to be heard. We need to be, you know, given that opportunity for us to be heard. So women need to be included in decision-making opportunities, in uh, leadership roles. So we need to be included. Though this government have done it, has done a lot by including women in, the, in this government, but uh, a lot needs to be done so that many women, no matter the background, the, where you come from, the state, your educational background, you need to be included. You need our he voices to be heard. Needs to be heard. Okay. Now, talking about our voices being heard, I know we've talked about inclusion when it comes to politics, like being included in leadership and all of that. I'd like to, I'd like you to shed more light on that whole voices being heard. The fact that our voices need to be heard. What areas exactly? Because lately things have changed. I personally feel that things have changed, or like before. There used to be a lot of uh, a lot of things going wrong with women. Now we talk about rape cases a lot. People are able to come out and talk about rape. Yeah. People are able to come out and talk about some sort of abuse and all of that. Now, are there areas that are still left untouched that women need to be heard? Are there other areas like that? Yes, that's a, those areas are um, the stereotypes that is affecting us. There's this challenge, there's this barrier that needs to be broken. We've been given the opportunity, but once we come out as women to bid for jobs or to seek for opportunity in, in the government or in some areas, we are asked, which school did you go to? We, are, we will be asked, who, who do you know? Who knows you? We'll be asked, which state are you from? And we'll be asked those kind of questions. And once you mention uh, that you're from this state, it kind of, you know, reduces the, your worth. It kind of, and then you say you, you attended this kind of school, this university, or this is the course you studied. Yes, women, we've been given the opportunity, but this is still the barriers that is holding us. The school we went to, the courses we studied, and the states we came from, and who we know, mm. is still a, ch a, a challenge facing women out there. Mm. I would love to think when you talk about the state one came from, the school one went to, I'd like to think of it as a general problem yeah. because even men face that. Yeah. But to you now, the gutsy woman, this I noticed you had something to say concerning this. Are there areas that you think that has that really we haven't shared a lot of light on concerning women's voices being heard? Um, I think so. I think so because there are places where you go to, you realize that there are more um, male-dominated areas, you know, and um, just like you mentioned earlier, I think that 
things are changing now, unlike before when women will speak up and they are asked to, you know, shut up. They don't come out and tell them, keep quiet, but you know they are indirectly telling you to, you know, keep quiet. And um, um, I'm grateful to, I think we are all grateful to those who have been able to come out and change the narrative. They were like the sacrificial lamb. I don't know if that's a good language to use. You know, things have changed, but there are still um, areas where we need more, where we need more women to get involved we need women to be allowed to get involved and not you know um relegated to the back okay we'll just leave that there but now um coming to you now since we've acknowledged that there are issues like this in what ways can we address them what ways can we address them are there ways are there other ways apart from um inclusion in politics i keep saying apart from i'm not sure why okay. but are there other ways that we can empower women so that their voices will be heard and so that their standard of living can improve. Because I strongly believe that um, there was something, there was an initiative I, I, I had sometime, some years ago, and it was the whole idea of instead of clamoring for inclusion, instead of clamoring for this to change, for that to change, you know, we can't just sit down and fold our hands until the, until the society changes their narratives yeah. on ideas. Are there ways that we can come out as well? Because I'm seeing women doing businesses, you know, big businesses, yeah. making it big. So when you attain that height, you find out that you have a voice automatically. Yeah. There's no matter how, you just have a voice. So what ways do you think that women can be empowered so they can have a voice? Okay, I was going to, you know, mention what you just said. For some of us, it's not even because we are not given the opportunity. That fear that, oh, if I step into that room, I don't think if they will give me that opportunity because they would prefer a man. You know, there was this project we were supposed to work on recently and um, to think that I would be the only lady on that, um, let me use the word table, that alone is a fear for me. I've said feeling like, oh, would I be able to match up? I don't want to come one day and tell them that, oh, I can't come this morning because my baby fell ill or stuff like that. Sometimes it's, the, it's something in our head, like it's something we already, it's in our mind. So it starts from us. You need to be open to, you know, don't, don't shut yourself out. Be open, be open to, um, don't let fear hold you back. Sometimes I, I would always tell people that it's not because we are not given the opportunity. Some of us, we don't tap into that opportunities. I was telling someone yesterday that um, there are a lot of empowerment projects for women here and there, but yet there are people you come across and you see that the basic skill or basic knowledge, they don't um, have it. So I don't think our women are even tapping into those opportunities as much as they should. And those women who are there already, I think they should make a way for others to come up. They should look for a way to get those who are coming up to, you know, get that they are doing well. I'm, I'm, like I would say, for God's sake, we have women who are very supportive towards our vision and initiative. We have more women supporting us than even the men. But I think that more women need to, you know, bring up those who, if you see that, oh, this woman is trying to build something and you are, you are advanced in that field, you know what you're doing, why not be a mentor? Why not um, serve as um, a guide to her? So I think those who are there already, irrespective of the fact that they face their own challenges, they face their own difficulties, when you speak with them, you realize that it's not even easy for them, but they need to help other women come up. That way we, we are able to you know, inspire the inclusion we are talking about. Okay, I would like to um, go back to you. So there's this whole, um, the word feminism has been given so many meanings today, like so many meanings, mostly negative, especially when you're online, you know, reading comments and seeing different posts. Now I'd like to know, you were asking that women should have a voice. Are we talking about feminism? Is there, is, is that what it is? Or is there a difference between what we are clamoring for and what feminism is all about? Yeah. yeah um, what I have to say about that is uh, let's let's it's not about feminism, if I may say. But the women, like she said, and me talking about inclusion, we need to help other women that are still down there and, and are rising. It's not about being a woman. Let the women who are already there help them. I remember in my kitchen where I work. Uh, we had our, our we have our chief cooks and all that, but I looked at that woman who is my cleaner. That's all she does, just to wash and all that. Then I brought her up and I asked her during our meeting, 
What do you think about this? By the time I included her and I asked her those questions, I saw the joy in her. And that woman being a cleaner brought about an idea and a suggestion that helped us. That helped us, even though the others uh, are very knowledgeable, well educated in that. But by the time I included her, her ideas was what that brought a change. So mm. we we all we have diverse, no matter the education, the background mm. where you came from, we have diverse ideas and suggestions that, if given the opportunity, can help the yeah. society grow. Now this is a very very powerful point of view. I like the way she just somehow filtered feminism out of this yeah. because when you say feminism now most of the times it just looks it like a people. gender war it looks like okay you're saying it is women against the men yeah. so she now made it clear that it's not just about men and women well it's not just men and women that are in this challenge oh, yes. it's not men versus women rather a, a, a situation where every woman is given a chance yes. now in her workplace now she was able to say ah so she called another lady and asked for her idea so the inclusion now should be a general thing yeah that what we're saying yeah. yeah it should be a gen everybody should be included whether a woman is at the top or a man is at the top yeah. which now leads to my question i'd love mm -hmm. your input on feminism and its advantage or disadvantage what do you think how do you think that feminism has come to affect the nigerian woman today um, like Chimamanda once said, I think a lot of people interpret, misinterpret the whole feminism thing. If you're a man who supports another, uh, who supports a woman, you know how to be there for your woman or other women. You're a feminist. You know, like I said, I think a lot of people have, you know, misinterpreted the whole thing. Even for us who have um, organizations, we are careful now not to do something and then they'll say, oh, they've come feminist you know things like that so it's now it's now a problem but um like i said earlier a, a man a, a woman any of us we like chimamanda said we can all be feminists depending on you know those who who support the movement to empower um women feminism is not man hatred that's the mistake people make is not man hatred we're just saying that women should be given equal rights if i have the um, required skill and I have what it takes to do a job, I should not be asked not to because I'm a woman. So it's no man hatred. We're just saying that women should be given. But now, you know, social media, with the, with the use of social media, a lot of people just use that as um, a shade to misinterpret the whole thing and cause um, a lot of trouble. But um, those who understand the meaning of this, they know that what it means is for people to come out and support women. Okay. In other words, I think we're actually all clamoring for humanism at the end of the day. Yeah. Because a feminist, a, a feminist, I mean, those who have the positive mindset towards it, if you're saying that a woman should be given equal rights, you're automatically saying that the man as well should be given because equal rights. Equal, yes. It's both both sides. Yes. It means there are two sides involved and they should be on the same platform. So it's humanism. Yeah, of course. So I just hope that people who are feminist coven, <laughs> they don't come for you. To fight they don't your come for you in the house because, in as much as I, I, I want to look at those men who are, you know, misinterpreting it and say you feminists, you feminists. There are also women it's who a are it wrong. Yes, there are women who have turned it to something else. But I like that we're discussing it, so we're getting clarity on these things. But you now tell okay. me. How did the Gutsy Woman come about? What is behind it? What inspired that initiative? Um, I would say we were looking for a way to see that we create a platform for women who want to better themselves to come together, you know. So um, we just want to um, create a platform where we can bridge the gap between women who want to better themselves and advanced women who would give them that opportunity. We want to create a platform for women to come together and collaborate, build partnership, meaningful, make meaningful connections and empower people while um, doing that. And to the glory of God, we've been able to, you know, achieve that. We are the bridge between, um, um, like I said earlier, women who want to uh, um, better themselves and those who are advanced. We are the bridge between um, women who just want to collaborate and work together. So um, it was born out of the desire to see that we create a platform for us to come together and seek solutions to our problem and also push ourselves together collectively grow so yes that's how um god's woman came about okay and to you august chuku <laughs> i don't know why i'm used to august chuku so but having that full name it's beautiful so i'd like you to tell us what areas do you think that women can improve more on 
Because the whole idea of this thing is to have better versions of ourselves, to have better versions of women out there. So what areas do you think women need to put some more effort in? Because we, we just can't be pointing. Yeah. We're not included, we're not included, but we're not even helping our lives. So just let us know. Okay, those areas uh, in self-development, um, getting to learn more, know more, whatever you are doing, there's still a lot to know. Improve yourself by getting more education, getting more enlightenment, go and know more, improving yourselves. Because uh, things are evolving, things are changing. The way we did it last year is not the way we are doing it this year, it's not the way we are going to do it next year. And another way is for us, if you have risen, please rise others. I usually tell my workers, there can be another testimony. Why are you here? Why have you been with me for years? You see me pushing them, you see me telling them, so whenever you are, say, a woman, whatever you are doing, make sure you raise another, make sure you raise another woman. If you haven't raised another woman, I don't think you've done enough. So mm. let's us help each other. Let's be the help that we are. We yeah, we need. Yes. Mm. Very, very beautiful. I think my take home for today is just what she has said, and of course what you have said, mm. it struck me really when she said women really need to start empowering themselves. It's a every time we're clamoring for something to change that you know when some of us are actually empowered to help other people yeah. and we're not doing that so every woman out there to all of you women i love you i've said that before but please take corrections where you need to take corrections <laughs> if you're on top and you think that there are ways that you can help other women other girls we're not leaving our girls behind stretch out a hand of help to people around you and let's make the world a better place i mean we can come up and we're strong people i mean we're strong. thank god the whip is not here to argue with me <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much thank you so much that was Ede rachel of the Aguirre, founder of the gutsy woman and Ogochuku Nerem Madreque. Madreque. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.